Now's your chance to interact with us. Call, email, or tweet us your comments, questions, and opinions. We want to hear from you right now. And now, here's more RCN Sports Talk. Welcome back to Sports Talk. Our uh, special guest list continues as we're now going to switch gears from football and talk wrestling with one of the premier wrestling programs uh, in the Lehigh Valley and some great uh, individual accomplishments, some great team accomplishments already so far this year with a lot more to come. So let's welcome in the head coach of Notre Dame, Matt Varis, and uh, Andrew Cerniglia, Cerniglia and Brandon Kletzos. I, I can tell I don't do wrestling, but I, I, I have heard your names quite a bit. Congratulations on your success so far. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. And we were talking, too, during the break. Uh, I was so excited that RCN had the Notre dame Becca match because that, that was going to be, you know, I, it's, so, it's tough with so many great wrestling programs in the area to, to say one match you really key on or you really look at. But I, I was like, it was so good, glad we added that to the schedule. You guys didn't disappoint. It was a jam-packed atmosphere. And I want to ask you about that night uh, overall, playing Bethlehem Catholic and everything that went in motion motion wise uh, sure I just want to say thank you for having us and the great opportunity for our program and our school uh, to be here and represent everything but uh, that match was a great match you know when you talk about wrestling and premier wrestling in the Lehigh Valley uh, Bethlehem Catholic Easton Nazareth Liberty and now Notre Dame but to wrestle Bethlehem Catholic for I think the first time in a few years in that environment at Bethlehem Catholic was a uh, was a phenomenal setting uh, it was a packed house the kids really enjoyed it and it was a pretty intense match there were some tight matches there were some you know major decisions some tech falls and some falls but overall it was something that we planned with coach Karam uh, back in midsummer, mm -hmm. and we knew going into it it was gonna be a lot of fun and for those kids to be a part of that environment and, and to wrestle in front of their family their friends their community it was a great experience and um, I look forward to, to doing it next year and a year after and a year after and I know these guys had a great time but uh, it was just an awesome setting I would think a night like that would help you get ready for the the big stuff that's to come the, the team championship the individual championships, the individual championships that are right around the corner at this yes, point. Yes, 100%. Uh, district duels are coming up, Colonial League Championships. We have a big match with Wilson in a few days. So uh, matches like that just prepare us for the postseason, uh, team-wise and individual. So, you know, we're fortunate and, and um, thankful to be a part of that. Andrew, could you talk about your, your role in that Becca match? Because Becca started to get some momentum, mm -hmm. and then you came on, and, and uh, Scott Barr and uh, Ryan Nunnemaker, our announcers, were starting to talk about all your honors and everything like that. And it was all of a sudden you had a pin, and you got the momentum back on your side, and you, you, know, you got the six points. And you know before you knew it, you were right back in the match. Yeah, um, I mean, I went out. I knew I had a job to do, so I had to take care of it. Um, but yeah, like just going out and getting the fall, wrestling hard, that's all you can do. Yeah. And Brandon, what was that night like for you? You had a, you had a big uh, big night that night too, and you know you're used to, to wrestling some of the best wrestlers in the country too. So I guess that didn't phase you being in that packed house. Um, no, not really. I mean, we've been in the big environment before, but that was just something special. So I mean, having partners like we do and uh, our coaches and everything, it really helps just going out and being prepared to wrestle. I mean, it's just something that we train to do every day. Yeah. And I don't know during that match there was some movement. You know, there was some speculation about who was going to be going at which weight classes and so forth. Yes. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the strategy and what's it like for you from a mental approach? I mean, do you, do you kind of fit, look at who you might be going up against? Because you, you can make a call and then Becca could switch. Yes. But how, how do you prepare for that when you're not, not quite sure who you're going against? Uh, going into that match, I knew it was going to be really tough. Um, the coin toss was huge. We lost yeah. the coin toss. So going after that, we knew we kind of had our backs against the wall. But uh, we made the moves that we could have made. Uh, we had some issues with weight descent plans where we couldn't get guys really where we wanted them to be. But um, at the end of the day, no matter if you bump up, bump down, the kids have to be ready to wrestle. And our kids wrestle tough. And Bethlehem Catholic is a great team. And those kids are, are coached well. And they wrestled really tough. So the moves we made, uh, some worked out, some didn't. But at the end of the day, it was a, it was a great night of wrestling. I know Coach Karen was very excited. And, and so was myself. And uh, it was just uh, good for the sport, good for your community. Yeah. And the morning call, there was a great article on you and your dad and the yes. relationship you have, too. Yes. Could you talk a little bit about that and, and you know, his role in uh, getting yeah. you into the sport? Uh, my father has been with us uh, since day one with coaching. I started coaching the Bethlehem Catholic system in 2007, and he's been with me every step of the way. We've coached a number of these kids um, since they were youth wrestlers. You know, Ryan, um, Holden Garcia, Evan Mag. Uh, those kids have been with us every step of the way almost. And uh, my dad's been there with us, and it's a great relationship. These kids get to see 
see a father son uh, coaching together and just every day um, the, the love that we have for each other and we just want to see have our kids see that and, and have that relationship with their fathers that hey no matter if you're at 65 years old 70 80 35 you can always be with them and I'm with them every day and uh, it's a lot of fun these guys you know we crack a lot of jokes and uh, these kids big Matt's he's uh, he's a huge part of our program what was last year like for you? It was your first year with the program. Uh, Andrew, it was a year of first for Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. uh, you you up, uh, knocked off Saucon Valley for the first time in a couple of years and, and had a great run then in the postseason too. So what were some of your highlights from last year and, and how much did that help you get ready for this year? Uh, just kind of kind of coming in from day one, we just kind of wanted to uh, change the culture at Notre Dame, make kids uh, just want to compete, want to wrestle, have fun, schedule the best tournaments, schedule the best teams, and just um, expect uh, to win at the highest level. Um, it's not always about winning and losing, it's about the winning path, and that's what we preach every day with these kids, just stay on that winning path in the classroom, in the community, uh, in the wrestling room, and uh, these kids are doing it. You know, they're, they're model citizens, they're leaders amongst their peers, and just to sit back and watch them compete in, in the practice room it's inspiring uh, it's a lot of fun and I'm so grateful to be a part of it I would like you mention the culture at yes. Notre Dame and maybe mm -hmm. these guys could speak that I've spent a lot of time over there cover the colonial some colonial league football and when I make the, I make the transition to boys basketball in the winter and every time I go over there I'm thinking you know this is a small place an old school yeah. but it's kind of got its own little unique vibe to it yeah, that definitely. it's a positive vibe and I know there's criticism you know, there's always critics about who's going where mm -hmm. and why this team has this roster and so forth but taking that out of the mix it's it, there's a great great educational uh, kind of a religious background there. Can you speak to that and that, that culture, that Notre Dame Crusader culture? It's, it's, you can kind of say it's like a family. I mean, you get to know everyone. Uh, you develop personal relationships, like with your teachers. If you need extra help, no issue. Um, I mean, that's all I can say. You got anything? Um, I just think like that small school and like even just the training facilities that we have, like you just really become thankful for what you have. And I mean, it really shows like where we came from and like where we're at now. And I believe that they value the, uh, the, the whole athletic department there. I mean, you got great coaches. I mean, yeah. I, I deal with Phil Stanball. I, I deal with Pat Boyle. I do, to a degree, deal with, with Josh Kopp. Awesome. We mentioned that was a beautiful segment on Mike there. And you, I mean, they want, they want good role models Yep. as coaches. They want teachers. They just don't want, I, I believe that Notre Dame wants teachers that you're, you're, you're teaching values, yeah. as well as the X's and O's oh, of yeah. your sport, right? You can speak to that. Uh, no, I mean, Amy Rogers is uh, is phenomenal. Uh, she is an absolute pleasure to work with. Uh, Principal D'Angelo was his first year last year, along with Mayan, so uh, we kind of hit it off right away. Uh, just really great people, supportive of every sport, support, supportive of you know the classroom, uh, the athletics, so we're just so grateful to be a part of that and to have those people in our leadership positions to, to really push these kids, not only in high school, but you know, uh, in, in college and beyond, and uh, we're just thankful for their leadership. Oh, you also have had some great success. In fact, Brett, you had you reached 100 win plateau, I re believe, around Christmas. So what was it like to get to that mark? Uh, it was a good milestone, um, especially finally getting that off my back. It was always something I wanted to get uh, coming in as a freshman. So getting it, especially in the Trojan War Finals, Mm -hmm. uh, that was definitely a big thing for me too. Good win, um, and finally got the hundred win. Yeah, you, you got Trojan War, which you won. Uh, you individually finished second in the Beast, I believe, and second in the Ironman. Yep. So uh, I mean, you know, I always say it, it's wrestling's unique from other sports. You go around the country, and then you come back to the Lehigh Valley and, and do the best. But yeah. I mean, those are some pretty big competitions too. What, what was it like? To, you got your hundred win, and then also to finish second in those major tournaments. Uh, yeah, obviously coming in second, it's good. Um, I think I, I wish I would have obviously came out with the title. But um, taking second in those two big tournaments, definitely um, it's a good thing to have, and especially going out to those tournaments for the experience is just overall a great thing. Now, Ryan, you last year, as a freshman, I believe, when you were a freshman, mm -hmm. you were ranked number one in the country, like before you ever wrestled at the high school level. Mm -hmm. And I said to Scott Barr, wrestling expert, I said, this is a lot of pressure to be putting on a fresh. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about putting pressure on sophomores with preseason predictions for football and basketball and other sports. Isn't this a lot of pressure? He's a wrestler. He can handle it. it uh, I mean, that's, that's a pretty big honor to receive coming into your high school career. So did you feel any pressure? And what was it like, what you've done, you know, leading up to high school, obviously, with, with so many 
20 great wrestlers in the country, that's a pretty special honor. Uh, no, I don't think I had too much pressure on myself. I mean, I put all my faith in my coaches and my family, and I have the best support system around. So I was feeling pretty confident that I could, um, you know, be successful at the high school level, not only at the middle school level. And, um, yeah, I just have a great support system. So, so Scott Barr was right again. Yeah. <laughs> I own a dollar. Yeah. Oh. You know, I, I want to ask you something about the wrestling in the Becca, Becca meet in particular, because mm -hmm. you, you come in, you don't know where the coin toss is going to be. You're, you're not sure where you're going to be. And then you came in a spot in that match where you needed to rack up a lot of points. Uh, do, you, do you have to kind of change your mentality from if you go early, okay, you do your own thing. And then if it's later in a match, okay, I got to rack up the points. And then if things don't work out well and, you know, the other team – mathematically is one, it either you win or you have lost by that point. Do you change your approach again? or I mean, what do you, you kind of go through as a, as a match is going on, what your role is going to be? Um, well, the team score was out of reach, so I was just going out, trying to score points, just wrestle like a normal match. Mm -hmm. um, there was a little bit of pressure on me. It was, it was pretty packed in there. I mean, it was a great environment for wrestling, and um, I think maybe I let the crowd get to me a little bit, but... Um, I felt like I wrestled pretty tough. My team wrestled tough, and it was just a great night. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of the intrigue, and one of the great things about wrestling is you have kind of that strategy as far as where you go. But, mm -hmm. I mean, is that kind of tough? Because, you know, you have guys who know how to wrestle, and they're, they're one of the best in the country. So do you, do you worry about putting pressure on certain kids about, you know, you know if, if we hold this guy up or we move him up <laughs> at the last minute, we're putting too much pressure on him? Uh, as far as uh, the pressure, we just try to preach to these kids, just go out and wrestle, have mm -hmm. fun. Uh, don't put losing or winning, you know, first. Just worry about competing, uh, scrapping it out for a full six minutes and um, the end result will take care of itself and I think that outlook with our program with our individuals really has a positive effect um, a lot of people get wrapped up in hey I gotta win I gotta win and I, get, I don't want to lose and then you don't wrestle as well if you just let it loose and say I have to score some points wrestle my match have fun uh, the end result will take care of itself like I said so these kids do have fun on a the mat uh, they have fun in practice it's not the, always the funnest sport but we do as much as we can uh, just have them compete and let loose and let it fly and we talk about letting loose. I, I, I got to say this. We've had, a, I've been on the show, what, three, four years now? Something yeah. like I'm always, I, I, We've had a lot of different teams in here, but I'm just impressed. You, yeah, I, I don't know if you've mandated it, that these guys are all coming in of the coat and tie, <laughs> and you want to... You want to represent your school yes. and your sport and your team exceptionally well. I don't know if you may, maybe it was required. I don't know if it's required every every day or whatever or when you go on the road. But I, I think there's something to be said yeah. about that, about showing class yes. at all times. Uh, the biggest thing in our program we stress is pride. If you take pride in what you do and every day and every aspect of life, you're going to be okay. Um, that goes as far as posture, as far as classroom attitude and habits, um, outside of classroom habits. Um, on the mat habits, if you take pride in that, and, and you will, shouldn't have no problems in life. You're going to live that healthy lifestyle, um, live a good moral life, and, and you can look at yourself in the mirror and be happy. And you look at these kids, and I'm thankful to coach them every day. I have a son. He's only 10 months old. I wish he was like 7 or 8 so they could look at these guys and he can be their role models. And um, it, it's, just, uh, it's just great to see, and, and they make me proud every day, and I'm so thankful for them. What's your upcoming schedule? I believe you got Banger and Pinardial coming up, Sandwich Around, Escape the Rock coming up. Yep. And then in a couple weeks, we got the uh, Colonial League tournament, which is a great four team yes. tournament uh, coming up. You'll probably see Saucon Valley at some point, yes. but I guess you never know. But uh, uh, what's the next couple weeks we like? We have uh, Escape the Rock this weekend. It's a really tough tournament. A lot of nationally ranked kids. Yeah. Every way is. Where's that at? Uh, it's a council, council Rock. Council Rock, okay. Yep. Uh, really tough tournament. A lot of good individuals there, a lot of good teams there. Uh, Bethlehem Catholics there, and locally, so is Easton and Northampton. So. So, might get some rematches. We might not, but uh, another opportunity to compete and, and just wrestle tough and have fun. And right after that, I think we have uh, Wilson Wednesday, and then Colonial League a couple days later, and then District Duels. So, it just gets better and better with every day. Yeah. When you go to those tournaments like like um, Escape the Rock coming up, do you ever learn anything new? I mean, you guys have seen pretty much most moves, but is there something that you can learn or uh, you know new technique from going out and seeing you know players, wrestlers from uh, from around the country? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, a major thing I learned from these tournaments is just um, build confidence. So mm. I know that if I do my thing, I shouldn't have a problem. But just going out there and just proving myself, no matter what the seed is, no matter who's watching or who's betting against me, I just always have to prove myself right. 
and just build confidence for my mental state, basically. Yeah. Um, probably the biggest thing I learned is uh, I gotta get better because there's some tough guys and you know they can push me. So whether it's learn new moves or just getting better at the moves I already do, and um, that's what I learned probably from. Uh, going to these tough tournaments. It's a good mentality. When you rank one of the best wrestlers in the country, you yeah. say you have to improve. That's, yeah. that's good that you want to keep looking to improve. Mm -hmm. um, as far as what you're looking to do the next couple of weeks, are you excited about uh, you have a couple more Colonial League matches and then you know hopefully uh, some big things come playoff time? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's exciting times. And I know these guys know it, and I'll let Ryan talk a little bit about the up upcoming couple of weeks, but uh, I know he's excited. Yeah, so we got Wilson in the Colonial League Championships. Um, we're probably going to wrestle Salkin two more times in the next two weeks, and uh, that's a really fun duel. Um, you know, they always bring the heat. They're a really tough team, and uh, it just feels good to, you know, you know, we beat them, I think, uh, two months ago, and it was a really good feeling. So, you know, I want that feeling again. Um, and it's just a great environment wrestling a team like that. Yeah, that's, that's the big one everyone has a target on, yeah. uh, looking to see. All right, well, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you. Congratulations on your you success again. And uh, hopefully some more uh, things coming down the pike as well. Yeah, thank Appreciate you very much. It. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. Matt Varis and the Notre Dame wrestling team, uh, an exciting year so far. And again, we'll be keeping an eye on them come district time, which, of course, you'll be able to see in a few weeks right here on RCN TV. We'll be back next week with another live show. For Keith, I'm Chris. Good night, everyone.